Well, hello everyone. I'm making a video for you while I'm uh, unable to work. And this isn't a very important video, uh, but it did occur to me just a couple of days ago while kind of half sleeping and meditating that I wanted to make it. And it's more of just a review of Friday or Thursday's class. And the subject is, uh, it's about the faith of Christ being what produces salvation inside of us. And I really want, if you guys can, I want you to take some time to really think about this. Now, some of you, I think, have this or have a deep sense of it. And so, you know, if you're, if you're listening to this video and you really do have that deep sense, maybe this video isn't for you as much. But I know there are still people in the center that, that struggle, that, that worry, that when their issues come up, they think and think and think and try to solve it by thinking. And then that creates a cloudy mind and it creates confusion and despair. And I also know that there, you know, there's people that fall into self-pity. And I know that there are people who, that, who immediately rush out and try to find solutions out in the world. And, and that's all, it's all what people do when they don't understand, when they don't yet know deeply that it is Christ that saves and that it isn't sort of rooted in us, you know, our salvation, which, you know, we're not talking now about going to heaven. Salvation is the process. It's the unfolding of our lives towards God and the healing and the resolving of our issues as we are brought closer to God. And, and what I want to say is if you have, if you have that faith, if you understand that it's not even your faith that is saving you, but that it is the faith of Christ, then it, it any of those tendencies to want to hurry and find a solution or to go into self-pity or to think and try to figure it out yourself or fix yourself and the futility of that kind of effort, none of that really ever gets a hold of you because you just remember, oh, oh, right, it's, it's Christ that is saving me. This thing I'm in right now is not very important. It's even if I'm in a state of resistance, it's not very important. It, 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 it ultimately, Christ is going to be able to save me from all of this. And if you, and if you do, if you do really put your faith in Christ's faith in you, rather than your faith in him, if you really have that, it brings a deep peace. It really does. It brings such a deep peace and a comfort and a knowing that the path is unfolding just fine. And, and, and you're, you're so much less likely to get into doubt and worry and concern and fear when you have this. It, 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 it's, you know, your present mood is just like clouds, you know, across the sky and the sun is still there, but you don't see the sun. So you're so nervous about it. But if you have this faith, you never lose sight of the fact that the sun is there and you don't worry about it at all. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's still going to grow. Every, you know what I mean? Like the sun is going to shine. It's still heating the planet. Everything is okay. The sun is still there. And these clouds don't really matter. And that's what you have when you have, when you allow your salvation to be about Christ's faith in you rather than your faith in him. And, you know, it brings a lot of patience too. you know, you, you patience. It's like, I, I, I kind of thought of that as tongue in cheek, um, but it's true. But it, it's it, it, in the beginning of growing that patience, it could be annoying. You do grow patience because you can't any longer like go out and try to fix yourself and come up with some, you know, I don't know, technique system to make everything better. You don't buy into that anymore. You don't buy it. You just, you don't buy it. And so you just come back and say, okay, it's Jesus that's going to, you know, save me. But then, but then you think, but when, right? But when? 
And that's where the patience comes in. You begin to develop a deep patience because it does take time. And it takes time because of us. It, it takes time because, because we can only take so much so quickly. It takes time because we'll only allow so much of it to happen so fast. There's just a, a rate at which our soul can stand it. And so it takes time and you really learn a deep patience. And that patience, I don't know, it, it grows in you. And it, 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 and you begin to have a deep trust that goes along with that patience. And so even in the midst of suffering of some kind, you can have a, a, just a wonderful experience of peace and trust with it. It's okay. Everything's okay. It's, it's a completely different world from where you are before you gain this. And, and, and then there's a surrender that grows in you because you can't control it. You know, once you give up on your schemes to make yourself better and your backup plans and your B and C, if this doesn't work, I'll do this and this, and you get all that in order and you're doing that too. Once you give all that up, uh, there's just a deep surrender that begins to set in where you just, you just kind of, you just trust and you just let go because you know God is going to do it. You know, and, and you know that it's going to be better than what you could do. And you don't really care anymore if it's different than what you would want. You just want what God wants. And the other thing, the other quality I want to mention, um, and I am a little off because I'm, I'm actually still sick, but I, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging all week. So um, is, is, is this presence. Um, when you know God is healing you right now, and you're not freaking out and throwing a fit and doing all the stuff you do instead. When you know God is healing you right now, it quiets you down. And it makes you want to pay attention to that. Just, you know, you can't, I can't discern everything God's doing. You know, I don't know about that. Um, I can see some things that are happening, but, but I don't, I can't really sort of discern it all. But I can just get a general sense of this wind that's blowing on me. And it's wonderful. It, I mean, think about that. Like you've got this breeze of the Holy Spirit blowing on you. That is healing all of your problems. That's, that's you know, that is deciding the outcome of your life. Right? That's, that's deciding the direction in which you're headed. And, you know, thanks to scripture and the center and the people in it that have gone before us, we know where that is. We know that it is increasing participation in peace, joy, and love. And, you know, just don't take those words lightly. Remember, they, they're spoken in the Christian sense. Way more is not said than is said. Joy is power. Joy is super consciousness. It's not small. Peace, joy, and love. Peace, joy, and love is your destiny. And you're just waiting for it. You're just, it's like waiting on the Lord. You hear that in the scriptures all the time. Waiting on the Lord. Well, once you quit all your scheming and controlling and all that stuff, once you let that go, then there's just this wonder, in place of all that noise and turmoil, is this wonderful experience of just of just knowing God is healing you. And it's incredible. And, and, and it doesn't even have to be, it is deeply um, spiritual. But it, 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 in any moment in life, you can just notice, man, I'm being healed by God. I know the direction my life is headed. That is wonderful. That's so wonderful. And, and it causes you to want to pay more and more attention to it and just kind of abide. You know, Jesus says, abide in me. Well, yeah, you want to abide in him when you realize the gift that's being given. And so, so that's, it's just incredible to have. But I wanted to, and I don't know how relevant this video is, I, I feel um, like I must do some kind of service. So I wanted to make this video and, and I thought, you know, I know people are resisting this. I know there are people that don't access this. 
they, it's like the 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 it, to get to that place of oh it's Jesus that saves me it, it lets you off the hook completely but you know not all of us want to be off the hook yet <laughs> some of us while complaining about being on the hook want to be on the hook for lots of reasons and I thought I would explain uh, some of them and and what I want to say though is that all of what I'm going to talk about and I don't think this is a complete list at all but everything I'm going to mention is just a manifestation of attachment to self. So, so original sin, right? We were, we were created to walk in and with God, to live with God. That's how we were created. We were never, ever intended to be uh, beings who live only on their own will or only on their own power. And we are, we are diminished when we try to do so, it's like a it's like a cell phone or a laptop saying, I don't need to be plugged in anymore. I could do it all on my own. I don't need those freaking, you know, computer programmers and those writers. Just leave me alone. I can do it all on my own. And then, you know, you start running out of power and you get viruses and everything breaks down. We were never, ever intended to live autonomously and 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 the desire to do so which the devil, you know, in the in the Garden of Eden story instilled in Adam and Eve. You know, you'll be like a god yourself. You'll be able to do it all yourself. Well, that's the original sin. That's what Christianity sort of thinks it all boils down to. And so, and so you have to find what is it in you that really you you, you might say you can't yet trust. Okay, sure, maybe that's true. But why can't you? And there may be uh, some reasons you could uncover. And I wrote some down. One of them is just is just wanting to be in control. You know, it's and this one can be so big. It's like asking a fish what water is. They don't freaking know. Um, this this you know wanting to be in control can be so big you don't even see it. But. Some of your resistance to salvation having nothing to do with you may very well be that you're just still so attached to yourself and being in control of your own life and your own destiny. And, and to let that go is a loss. It, it's perceived as a loss. It, it's unfortunate that we don't have foresight sometimes because what's perceived as a loss, I would be losing this control I have. And you feel that control. You don't really have control. You really can't control your life, but you have that feeling of control. You can choose to do whatever you want, whenever you want, and you can control things. And that that's a good feeling, it has a good feeling to it. I mean, it's suffering, but from our perspective, it feels kind of good. What you don't know is that when you give that up, you're really just giving up this tiny, um, false, warped view of yourself and, and limited. It's so limited and so small. And when you give it up, you enter something more cosmic. You, you, get, you get a bigger version of yourself. You, 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 you give up this small controlling self and this expansiveness opens up. And then now all of a sudden, you still exist. You survived. But not the tiny, fearful, controlling you. That didn't survive. But you find out when you give that up, there's this whole other sort of spaciousness that opens up. There's this other thing that's there for you. And, and, and it's bigger. And it's, and it's better. And it's more open and it's more, it, there's way more possibilities. It's more inclusive. It's, it's as if you're now not just living in your body, but your, your soul. You're, you're living in your soul and your soul kind of extends out and touches a lot of things. So then you start to feel a part of things instead of apart from things. That's all because you take a step outside of self. So giving up that control, it looks like you're losing something. But you're not losing anything at all. And, and you know, you might want to just imagine what it would be like. Like right now you think, I want that control. Well, take a, a, an experiment and say, but what if I don't want that control? What if what I want is that spaciousness? 
There's a, there's a better thing to be grabbing onto. There's, there's, a, there's a better state of consciousness to be living in than that. And it just takes that you know, willingness to step into it. And so, so control is one of the things I think that gets in the way. And another is anger. And, you know, it's surprising how many of us are angry at God. But, but we are. And, and there's, so there's, sometimes there's really, it's like, I'm not giving my life to God. And I try all day, but I can't. This is what I hear people say. Well, when we get down to it in inventory, well, what we find out often is there's a lot of resentment and anger towards God for perceived pain that God may have caused, for the pain in the world, for not giving you what you wanted, um, for giving you something bad. There's a lot of anger there. And so how are you going to... It, it, it seems impossible, doesn't it? To allow Jesus to be in total control of your salvation and destiny while you're mad at God, while you're angry at God. I'm pausing to cough. So, so if you have this anger towards God, then it's, it's not that God isn't still saving you. God is. God will eventually heal all of this, I mean, you, if you're willing. And so, so it's, not, it's not as if it's not as if God isn't going to heal you or isn't healing you. But you, you don't get to experience any of the joy of that. Any of the trust of that. You still have to spin out every time something bad goes wrong because you're not putting your trust in him instead of you. And then there's self-pity. You know, people want to feel sorry for themselves. They want to just soak around in that for days and days right how, how no one understands them or or they have more suffering than anyone else no one loves them and you know for some of us there's a little bit of truth to that not once you're in the center but you know for some of us our family of origins weren't very loving and so there can just be this permanent sort of self pity that we writhe around in instead of what someone who has this faith thing down does what they do is they is they notice this big problem that has arisen they see the gravity of it they have remorse for it if it's to do with their character defects but they also just have a deep trust they're like yeah i know i get it and i'm really i, I detest this but i know god is healing me so there's that peace and what self-pity does is it, 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 it replaces that, that being able to abide in God's power in a peaceful way and being present to it and observant of it and even just sort of reverent to the sacred power that runs through us. You know, it's such a profound thing to see a whole life changing because of God's power is profound. And what self-pity does, just what all these resistances do, they just completely block any of that. So you just sit around in suffering and it's not even necessary. It, it isn't necessary. It, it's not, it isn't real. What's real is this eternal thing. And then what we're doing, we're throwing a fit instead. So self-pity is one. There's another um, that I think some people are prone to, which is to be too flippant about it. It, 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 it like, yes, it is just happening. It, it's just happening and I'm doing nothing to make it happen. And it's happening. But that's not, um, that's not something to be flippant about or dismissive about. That there can be a too casual a sort of experience with that. And what's lacking there is a bit of reverence and a bit of presence with it, a deep noticing of it and gratitude for this power that is changing us. So there can be a, a flippancy too casual about it, which is also not actually truly engaged with it. It's a different way of not being engaged. Okay. And um, envy. A a envy is one. Um, I don't know how many people in the center have this. I know it exists, but I don't know how many. 
But there, there's also this sort of, and it gets down to control also. I, here's, and here's this sort of character defect talking. I can't let God be in control of my salvation because what if God makes me not that great? What if God gives more to that person than me? I mean, what if I perceive that person to be having more than me? And so envy can keep someone from accepting salvation. Because what if it isn't that neat? What if I accept the fullness of God's love and it isn't wonderful? What if it's ordinary? And, and, and obviously, you know, Christianity really reveres being ordinary. I know you guys have heard me say it, but if you haven't heard it in a while, we want to be ordinary. We want to pray to be ordinary. Just normal people. That's what we want to be, normal people. Nothing, we don't have to be, it's our culture that lies and tricks us into thinking we have to be something exceptional. That's not it. If we're going to be exceptional, at least let us be exceptional in our surrender to God's will. I guess that would be okay to be exceptional there. But we're not looking for exceptional, are we? That's, that's a lie. And so this envy creeps in, this worldly envy creeps in and says, if I, if I put it all in, into God's care, I won't be able to control it and make it something wonderful. And that's death. And that just keeps us from the truth. It keeps us worldly. It keeps us in sin. It keeps us fragmented. And God has to heal all that. But, you know, you, we could stop doing it too, couldn't we? We could maybe do some inventory and at least be willing to let it go if we can't let it go. Okay, that's about it. Um, well, uh, there's one caveat with that, which is, it's so it's like, oh, here's another one I better mention, is a, a, a belief that your resistance to God is more powerful than God. And a lot of people have this one. A, a lot of people have this one. And it's funny because it, it just can't be true provided that when you're not flipping out and throwing your fits and doing all your stuff you do, underneath it all you're saying, God, I do give this to you even though I throw my fits. And, and so we're really then saying, provided you actually really want to be on this path. And, and most of you, there's a, oh, I, I know a couple people that struggle with this piece. They, they, maybe they don't want God to heal them. Maybe they don't want to get better. There are some people that do that, and that's a different kind of problem. But for the most part, it, it, I know your prayer life is, yes, I want to be well. Yes, I don't want to be this way. That, that when you're in your heart of hearts, sincerity with God, talking to God in prayer, that weighs more heavily than when you're flipping out, doing your games you play, throwing fits. And, and, and your deep prayer with God is what God hears. And this stuff God puts up with. <laughs> This stuff God patiently awaits for you to stop throwing that fit and then later you'll come back to your heart of hearts, which is, yes, God, I do. I do want to, to let you heal me. And, you know, for the ones who struggle with that piece, it's not, it's, it's not even a big deal. It just, it's another layer deeper, which says, you know, God, help me um, to really want to because I don't. And, you know, and I, and, and, and for those people, it becomes very important that they realize that the, all the fits that happen, all of their suffering that they blame God for, it really comes down to being because they don't want to give their whole life to God. They don't want to let God heal them. They don't want to. And that's why they suffer. And, and, and hopefully holding that fact in their mind and heart regularly, daily, all through the day, gets them tired of their antics because you, it's, it's, it's like you can suffer for a long time if it's God's fault, but you don't suffer as long or as willingly when you start owning the fact that it's your fault. So once you start saying, yes, I, this is what I do. I don't want God to heal me. And so I turn God away and then I just go into abject suffering because I've cut myself off from all light. Maybe I could stop doing that now because it's insane. And so those people, that's how they grow into it. So, okay, so that's it. Um, 
I almost regret making this video just because I feel funky, um, but I hope it helps you guys. I, it came to me while praying, so I thought I would just send it out, and I'll also um, make a Thursday class video too. Thank you all very much. Um, uh, I'm okay, by the way. I'm mostly better. I'd, I said 90% in a text to somebody. I'd say I'm about 80% better. Um, and still quarantining, living in the center. Um, and uh, I hope you're all doing very well.